Hello and welcome to this video. If you see my la latest video over on the Boffix channel, then you'll see how I explain what the difference between debits and credits are. And that's all well and good, and we need to know the fundamentals of how the concept works. Well, let's deep dive into what it means in the world of QuickBooks Online. Why debits and credits still matter, but why, thankfully, QuickBooks has made it so it's super simple and you can get away without even needing to know the concept to be able to do your bookkeeping. So join me as I go and look into QuickBooks Online and the term debits and credits. Hello, my name is Anne Patrick. I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also Head of Account over at Boffix. One of the biggest benefits of QuickBooks Online is just how simple it is to use. And nothing says simplicity more than taking a really complex concept called, like debits and credits and making it so that you don't need to worry about them when doing your bookkeeping. Even though you don't need to know about it to complete your bookkeeping in QuickBooks Online, it's still very worthwhile understanding the fundamentals so that if you ever need to make any adjustments, ever need to figure out what's going on in the world of QuickBooks Online, then you'll be ready to do it. So we're just gonna have a quick deep dive into QuickBooks Online and make sure we understand the concepts of debits and credits within the world of bookkeeping. Let's have a look. Okay, first thing is first. Here on screen in front of me is a breakdown of your dashboard. And nowhere does it say the words debits and credits. If I went to new at the top up here and I looked at putting any of these transactions in, nothing says debits and credits. And the only time we really see debits and credits really mentioned when it comes to transactions is if you're going to do a journal entry, bring up a journal entry. And as you can see, debits and credits are shown here because that's what a journal entry is. It's a prime entry where you're actually going to interact with debits and credits and you're going to move them around. As accountants, we love journal entries. They make our life so much easier. We are able to make fundamental changes to a set of accounts just by putting in journal entries, by putting the debits and the credits and putting them into the relevant accounts. But what QuickBooks does really nicely is means that you don't need to know debits and credits to be able to put a transaction in. Let's have a look at some examples. So if I knew and I wanted to put a sales receipt in, so say I've received some money, then yes, I need to pick a customer. Yes, I need to put a date in there. I need to choose what bank account that money's going to. So in this case, business bank. I need to choose a product and service. So in this case, I'm just gonna put sales. I need to put an amount in. And to make my life easier on this one, I'm just gonna put no VAT, because we don't wanna worry about VAT for this particular idea. Now again, we've not been asked once about debits and credits. We've only been asked what bank account we want to put it into. We've been asked what it is we're selling and the amount we're selling it for. And then we put a date in there so that we know what the date of the transaction is and we can put a customer in there to make our life easier. And they're your fundamentals. Everything else in here is all about making the data work better for you. Location, classes, tags. They're all about ways in which we can put elements to our transaction so that we can find it easier or be able to report better against it and if I was to press save and close then now I've added a thousand pound to my bank account and I've created a thousand pound of sales and I can see that if I went to reports look to my profit and loss went and just do today's date and press run report then there it is one thousand pound in my sales and I look at my bank account today is increased by £1,000. So even though I just put in a prime entry, a sales receipt, the actual idea of putting debits and credits have actually been done for me. You see, if you look back at that video I did over at Boffix, the concept of debits and credits is easier to understand if you relate back to the bank account. And in this scenario, we've just increased the bank by £1,000 and we've added £1,000 to our sales. So we've created a debit and net credit entry for is we've debited our bank account by increasing it and we've credited our sales by increasing the amount of sales that are there. And for us to see that in concept, we can actually use QuickBooks to help us. So I'm gonna use the search bar at the top and I'm gonna go and bring back that transaction. Here's that a customer, 1,000 pound against our business bank. And down the bottom here, I can use more and transaction journal. 
And what a transaction journal does is shows me what it means from a debit and credit point of view. Again, my transaction was a sales receipt of a thousand pound. But what QuickBooks has done is it's put a debit and credit in there for me, debiting my bank by a thousand pound, crediting my sales by a thousand pound. And it's by looking at this report, and remember this is available on any transaction I want by going to the search bar, bringing that transaction up, going to more, going to transaction journal, and you can see that we now have the debit and credit broken down for us. So we can see from a journal point of view, what's actually going on here. We're debiting the bank account by a thousand pound, increasing it, crediting our sales by a thousand pound, making sure that we're showing more sales there. And we can use this little trick on any transaction in QuickBooks. So if I went to reports and I went to my profit and loss, so imagine I wanted to look at my purchases. I go to purchases. I find a transaction that I'm interested in. So this one here. This is telling me that it's made an expense. So I didn't put debit and credit in. In fact, this one was done directly from my bank account. I put it to purchases, no VAT. And all I need to do is go more, transaction journal, and I can see what my debit and credit was. Well, in this case, my bank account has been reduced by £2,200 and my purchases account has been debited by £2,200, showing me extra purchases in there. And QuickBooks is doing this for me each and every time. You see here, I've got Apple Core Accountancy giving me some income. All I need to do is record this as a sales receipt. I'm going to again say no VAX. I don't want a complication of VAT this time around. And all I'm going to do is press add. Again, this hasn't asked me debits and credits at all. But what I can do now is then go to that transaction. It's created me a sales receipt. It's put it against my bank account. It's put it against sales. And all I do now is do more transaction journal. And now this is going to show me my debit and my credit all split nicely for me. I've debited my bank account by £100, increasing the amount in the bank. I've credited my sales for £100, meaning I'm now going to show £100 of additional sales in my financial statements. And I can replicate that by going journal entry, accounts, increase it by £100, sales, increase by £100, additional, add some additional £100 of credit, so I'm making sure I'm showing more of my sales, save and close. I've basically just replicated exactly those last two transactions. Either as a sales receipt or a journal entry, they're both gonna come out exactly the same, showing a hundred pound of additional sales, or in this case now 200, because I've got two of them. And also my bank account is gonna increase by a hundred pound each time. So if you think about it, these transactions here, invoice, expense, payroll, receive payment, check, pay run, estimates, bills, credit notes, all of these transactions are effectively journal entries, but what they've been doing is make it into transactions that make more sense to you and me and make it so it's more easier for us to use. But at the heart of everything that QuickBooks is doing, it's doing a debits and credits transaction for every transaction we put into QuickBooks. And we can see that if we go into our reports, look at our trial balance, because look, our debits and our credits mean in that we've got a balanced trial balance. And we look at our general ledger, and you can see by running my general ledger on today's date, I can see that my balance is brought forward are coming through, but more importantly, when I've got transactions in there, I've got £1,100 of debits against my bank account. And as I scroll down, I have £1,100 of credits against my sales account, which means if I add my debits and credits together, I'm gonna have 1,100 pound, which is a balanced TB. If I was to put an expense in for today's date, let's say I've purchased something for 600 pound and done save and close. If I look at my debits and credits in that general ledger, I have now 600 pound less in my bank account, reducing my bank balance. I'm still showing my £1,100 in sales, 
but I've now got a £600 expense. Meaning that if I added my debits and credits together, I'd have exactly the same amount and it will balance, which is a plus. But now if I go to reports, profit and loss, today's day, it's going to take that information from my general ledger, £1,100 in sales, £600 in purchases, giving me £500 of net operating income, which is the amount of money that my bank account has increased in today. All of that £500 has been received in my bank. That's why my bank's increased by £500. So hopefully you can see that QuickBooks is making it really easy for us to deal with debits and credits without us even knowing it. And all we need to do is go to that more option onto a transaction, go to transaction journal, and you're going to be one step closer to understanding debits and credits. As you debit £600 there to purchases, credit £600 against my bank is why I'm showing a £600 expense and importantly, a £500 profit when you take into the sales, thanks to debits and credits. So there you are, QuickBooks is making it really easy for you to understand debits and credits. And all you need to use is that transaction journal to start getting your head around what transactions are doing so you can understand things going forward. That's gonna give you more confidence when it comes to putting your own journal entries in, which are gonna affect your transactions even more. Let me know below, is there any way that you use debits and credits and understand debits and credits. What's your favorite way of doing it? I had a whole video, like I said before, on the Boffix channel, which goes through debits and credits in a little bit more detail so you can understand it and understand the concept. My name's been Aaron Patrick. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. Hopefully you now understand the concept of debits and credits within QuickBooks Online. And I'm sure I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's real and new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat, Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.